This video is sponsored by Dice Dungeons. Dice Dungeons has a new Kickstarter for some sweet polyhedral metal dice, dragon scale dice. We all love dice, we love showing them off, we love collecting dice, and most of us have a dice problem. Cover all of your bases by grabbing a set of dragon scale dice from Dice Dungeons. These designs are super fun, the metallic weight is great, and they're sure to impress your Eberron group. After all, these dice were found in the Draconic Prophecy. It's all part of the master plan. Check out their Dragon Scale Dice Kickstarter today by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks again, Dice Dungeons. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. I'd like to talk about the Eberron city of Sharn. This is a major city in Corvair, and with Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron and Rising from the Last War, there is plenty of information to go over. I won't necessarily equate it to another city in, say, the Forgotten Realms or even the real world, but it's old, big, and important. Sharn is in fact the largest city in Corvair, with a population of half a million people. This number has fluctuated in older and newer publications, so don't at me. Humans make up a third of that number, with dwarves being the next largest in quantity. Each race has a significant presence in the city. Even changelings have a small community in Sharn. About 10,000 individuals come and go from the city daily, seeking fortune, refuge, work, or a new home. Known as the City of Towers because of its large towers that cover the entire city, but it's also been called the City of Knives, the City of Lost Souls, the City of a Thousand Eyes, the Gateway to Zendrick, and the Gateway to Perdition. Sharn is a vertical city that sits atop the cliffs of the Dagger River in southern Breland. There are five distinct plateaus upon which the towers are built. The Central Plateau, the Memphis Plateau, Northridge, Dura, and Tavix Landing. Because the city is vertical, it is divided again into wards. The lowest ward is known as the Cogs, the lower city, middle city, and finally you would reach the Skyway where the wealthiest citizens live. Bridges connect many of the towers. If you fall off of a bridge, odds are you will hit another bridge before falling all the way to the cogs below. There are sky coaches that can take you from tower to tower. Magical lifts exist to transport people both vertically and horizontally. If you do travel in Sharn, it is advised to have a magical item that allows you to cast Featherfall. Although unlikely you will die if you fall off a bridge, it will still hurt and you'll suffer injuries. Sharn is held together with strong magic. It was discovered that the spells to create and reinforce the buildings are stronger if you build off an already existing tower. A patchwork of construction has occurred where new buildings are magically bonded to others for structural integrity. The higher structures in the Skyway are supported magically from the towers below it. This unique architecture has blocked out the sun in lower wards. Too many towers all interconnected. Being the city of towers, one would think it looks more like skyscrapers, but in actuality it's a series of blocks piled haphazardly against and on top of each other. Little sunlight causes the lower districts to be unable to grow any plants. They are dark and dank places. Sharn is an old city, and current Sharn was built upon the foundation of an even older city that was around before humans settled in Corvair. The hobgoblin Dakani Empire created their greatest city in the location of Sharn. It was carved into the cliffs and was known as Jasharat. The hobgoblins dug tunnels and chambers deep underground, but as the city grew, they eventually started building towers and focused on going upward. These beginning towers serve as the foundation for modern day Sharn. Unfortunately, when the Delkir invaded Eberron, the city was devastated, and the hobgoblins were never able to repair the city in full. When humans made their way to Corvair from Sarlona, they stumbled upon the hobgoblin city. A human pirate who is part of the first humans to come to Corvair, named Malian the Reaver, took control of Jasharat and enslaved many of the goblins in the area. He then renamed the city Sharat, and the city grew again. Sharat was conquered when Brigor, first king, who was the first ruler of what would become Breland, took control of the region. He renamed the city Sharn, and over the next 800 years, the towers began to rise and rise as the city developed into what it is today. Dragonmarked houses appeared and took control of Sharn, changing it into an economic powerhouse. Now before Galifar had unified Corvair, some of the Dragonmarked houses went to war against those who had aberrant Dragonmarks. A military leader of the aberrant Dragonmark forces named Tarkanon took control of Sharn and it became the base of operations for the Aberrants. This didn't last and Sharn was besieged by Takaran's enemies. When it became apparent that his forces would no longer be able to hold the city, he used his aberrant dragonmark powers of earth and fire to destroy much of the city. For 500 years, the city was a burial place, ruins that reminded others of the War of the Mark. 
It wasn't until Galifar took control of the Five Nations that he rebuilt Sharn, and under his leadership, Sharn became a center for trade and diplomacy. Present-day Sharn, there are numerous political and financial powers that wish to control it. There is a face to the political aspect of Sharn known as the Lord Mayor of Sharn. Many believe them to be in control of Sharn's policies, but actually this person is appointed by the city council. And the city council is made up of 17 individuals, one for each ward of the city. How they become appointed varies from ward to ward. It is this council that establishes laws in Sharn. The Dragon Marked Houses also hold sway in Sharn, four of them to be specific, House Caneth, House Deneath, House Kandarik, and House Civis have a major presence. I'd recommend the books Sharn, City of Towers, and of course Rising from the Last War if you plan on having a Sharn-based game. It could be fun for a whole campaign or just a pit stop for your players. Because Sharn has been built, rebuilt, and added onto, there's a rich history waiting for adventurers. Delving too deep into the cogs, one might stumble upon old hobgoblin tunnels that lead to Kyber. A city of intrigue, your entire campaign could take place in Sharn. Thanks to Dice Dungeons for sponsoring this video. Check out their Dragon Scale Dice Kickstarter in the description below. Thank you, patrons, and I will see you next time with another episode of Eberron Explained.